happy that I got through the glaucoma that I had to go through a couple of more, you know, follow throughs that they go back to regular doctor and hasn't changed, that thing will make a change, and then I went up in the But Joe, uh, he did have trouble finding arrangements to bury his mother, and I'm, I'm asking for prayer for guidance and the charity to figure this out so they did not get stuck with a mess of what to do. All right, but it's just a little irritated. She always having trouble getting around. She has like a um, pinched spine or something. It's real bad and it's a little busted. So really, prayers for those two. I'm trying to help you out as I can. That, that, that God can tell me what to do. So I know it's the right thing to help her. It's the right to help her down the line. That I'm a human looking creature. That God can reach farther. And, and I just can't get the guidance on my hands. Basically, his family, but kind of looks for a place for his mom's face. Constantly falls and in and out of the hospital. And they're meeting with a real litter farm somehow, so they can put her in a nursing home for assisted living. So, just wisdom and favor in that whole kind of that whole yeah. situation. Yes. Wisdom as his friend tries to bury his mother. We ask for healing for his friend Cheryl. She touch her back. Let her be pain free. Yes, and we pray that you know the right place. You know the right place for Holly's mom. And that she would guide their steps, Lord, to the perfect place. That it will be the open at the right time. That the house cell will go smoothly, Lord. And that this transition is a divine transition, Lord. That your favor guides them, that your wisdom guides them. Just surround them with peace. Jesus. We pray for all those who will attend Winter Jam. We pray for all those kids who may be hearing about Jesus Christ for the first time. We pray for all those that gather to worship and lift up your name in this city, our home. That you would be lifted high and magnified in Moines, Iowa. And that everyone who goes would be blessed, Lord. Blessed by your presence in their midst. We thank you for the fruit of that concert from last year that is part of this body. And we ask that you continue to work, Lord. And for all the needs here tonight, the unspoken needs, Lord, you know the hearts of your people. You know the needs before we can ask or think, Lord. And we thank you that you have given us victory in all things. We thank you that you have called us blessed and highly favored, Lord, that we may walk boldly, knowing that you guide and lead us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. We thank you that your favor flows in our life. Lord, open our eyes for the opportunities that arise all around us every day. Opportunities to be salt and light in this world. Opportunities to share the good news that it is finished, that our earthly work is done, Lord. Our fleshly work is done, that you have accomplished it and finished it, and it is a free gift for whosoever will. 
Thank you for the love that you have first given us that we could pour out all around us. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful in all that we need, all that we ask, Lord. Be with us tonight as we gather together, Lord. Be in our midst as we worship and praise you. Be in our midst as we receive your word, Lord. Let our minds be transformed and our hearts renewed. Be with us tonight and have your way in this service. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yeah. Um, Sarah called earlier tonight. Um, she was going to pick up Eric. Their delivery van broke down. Uh, he was out of town somewhere, so she asked for prayer as well. So we'll go ahead and pray for Sarah. Heavenly Father, we pray for Eric and Sarah and for agricultured foods, Lord. Their ministry has been such a blessing to this body, their ministry of health and wholeness and healing. And we ask for a blessing, Lord, over that business and over Eric and Sarah, that you touch that van, make it give wisdom, Lord, divine wisdom, to know what the problem is and to get it fixed. And get them home safely so they can go on about their business and make the deliveries that are necessary for the existing for the success of their business. Be with them until they can gather with us again. Pour out your blessings upon them, and we thank you that you brought them and made them part of this body. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, just a reminder, if you brought a cell phone with you tonight, please silence it till after the service or turn it off. And it's our last announcement about Winter Jam. We're gonna be at 445. Northwest corner just across the street from the Allen Bed Center, so it's the uh, south of the big parking lot and east of the small parking lot. Be there at 445 and then get in line and go in and whoever can make it. Um, there's several, a couple of groups going, uh, but that's where we're going to meet at uh, 445 at that location. So if you can make it great. All right, uh, Ron, you want to take an offering tonight?
You are everything to us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings, for all that you're doing in our lives, the seen and the unseen, Lord. We just give you praise tonight, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We declare that it is the name above every name, Lord. And we bow before that name today. And lo, that all will bow before it one day, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your great love wherewith you have loved us. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your life and making that life more abundant in each and every one of us, Lord. We bless you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Give the Lord a clap of praise tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mike and the worship team here. Praise God. Good job, as always. Something attacked me. Something went once. <laughs> Not that I didn't deserve it, but <laughs> praise God. Amen. God is good. I, uh, I mentioned. I think it was Sunday. I mentioned my uh, our youngest daughter and her husband had made a bookshelf for me because my the bookshelves downstairs were overflowing and had books stacked around the basement or the, not the basement but around the base of the bookshelves and so they built another one for me upstairs and I was moving books up there and I came across a an old book that I hadn't looked at for quite a while. You know how that goes when you get books and they just get stuck in there and then you, by accident you're looking for something and you find one you weren't looking for. But I did find this book. It's one of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and, and I had marked a page in there and I just turned it to that page and here's what it was. It, it, I know he didn't mean this as revelation but that's the way it came across to me and it, it just kind of touched me at the time because it's just exactly what we're trying to do with the Word of God, and that is bring out revelation, find what it is that God's really saying to us. And, and here's what he had written anyway. So, the charm dissolves space, and as the morning steals upon the night, melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer reason. Their understanding begins to swell and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shores that now lie foul and muddy. I thought that was powerful. It's, it's exactly what God is trying to do in each one of us. And that's to... He's delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. He is the light that lights the world. He is the revelation of all revelations, the beginning and the end and everything in between. And I think the more we uh, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the depths of what God has given us in this Word, the more we are transformed into His image and the more we begin to realize all that we have in Him and all that He has for us. That's the, uh, that's the real goal that we have. That's the real mission that we're on is, is to know him better, is to know him more clearly and to be, uh, to be transformed. And I'm not talking about so that we never do anything wrong or we never make a mistake because knowing myself, I'm not really expecting that till the next one, but, uh, but I can expect to experience all that he is because of His grace, He's not depending on my perfection. 
but he does want to give me his perfection. He does want to reveal himself to me in ways that will ultimately change my life for eternity. Amen. We've already been transformed into his image, spiritually speaking, but there's so much that we could experience in this world that he wants us to have and to enjoy right here and right now. So that's, that's what we're after. Praise the Lord. Uh, so with that in mind, I'd like to uh, begin tonight in Genesis chapter 1, and we'll read verses 27 through 29. Genesis 1, 27 through 29. Praise the Lord. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise the Lord. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree, yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Praise the Lord. All right. And then 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 well, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Is that, that's not 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. I'm sorry. It is... That is what it is. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Revelation. For whatsoever, yeah, okay. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Okay, praise the Lord. So, when God, uh, I had two messages going here. That's why I was a little bit confused with that. I had another scripture in my mind. But when God started out, and we read in Genesis uh, chapter 1 there, he had Adam and Eve. And he gave them, he says, he starts out with Adam and Eve, and for them, he gives them herb bearing seed. He gave them trees that uh, bore fruit, and within the fruit was seed. All right? So let's go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 14. The sower sowed the word. All right? Verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Okay, so Jesus is making this pretty clear to us. Herbs and trees represent the word of God. We're going back to Genesis, and that's what, that's what all of that is talking about. Amen. And in that, those herbs and those trees that bear seed, that have seed, God is telling Adam, that's your inheritance. That seed supplied him with the way to multiply and perpetuate his inheritance. Now, if you listen to me tonight, <clears throat> I'm telling you there's more here than meets the eye. So God has given us his word, just as he gave Adam trees that bear fruit, and in that fruit there's seed that would produce more trees, that would produce more fruit, and on and on and on. Likewise with the herbs. They all had seeds, and the seeds would then produce more herbs that would produce more seed. And it was a, that, that he's speaking of symbolically here is your inheritance, and you can increase this inheritance by what I have given you. Amen? So this is how seed supplied him with the way to multiply and perpetuate his inheritance. This is seed. The word is what we sow. And he said, this is how you get the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a man, it's like a man casting seed into the ground. Okay? We should take this seriously because God's trying to show us something very clearly how this whole thing works. He's given us an inheritance and we can perpetuate that inheritance through the seed that he has provided for us, through the word of God. Amen? All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. Second Corinthians 9 and 10. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower 
both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. The fruits of righteousness is our being like God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. He has given us, that's the great exchange, He took our unrighteousness and gave us His righteousness. That righteousness puts us in a position where we are now inheritors of God. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ for all that God has for us. So God starts out by first giving us the whole apple or the tree or the herb bearing seed. Then it's our responsibility to extract the seed from that. Amen? Extract the seed and the inheritance then He provides and perpetuates the continual growth of the inheritance. So the, the inheritance is without end. It never ends. As long as you've got seed, you can produce more of an inheritance. As long as we have the Word of God, there's no end to what God can do in our lives. Praise the Lord. That's the inheritance, is the seed. We have to extract the seed, amen, in order to produce more inheritance. Another tree, amen, another herb that will then produce more seed, amen? That's the symbolism here. So if we followed this procedure, our lives would be, they wouldn't be a struggle, amen? Instead, it would be God's goodness sustaining us by His grace. See, all Adam had to do, it wasn't a struggle for him. All he had to do was tend the garden, amen? All he had to do was look, watch over the trees and the herbs and continue to pluck and sow. Praise God. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that you through His poverty might be rich. So notice we're not made rich by us working the field. Amen? We're made rich through His poverty. The seed is brought forth from those riches by His sacrifice on our behalf. Look at John 12, verse 24. He's speaking of Himself, and He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. That's Jesus talking about Him dying. Praise the Lord. He became poor that we might become rich. He's the seed that brings the fruit into our lives that we get to experience. Amen? So, notice that we're not made rich by our work, but through His poverty. Seed is brought forth from those riches by His sacrifice. Amen? On our behalf. Praise the Lord. Look at Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. To open their eyes, this is Paul talking, this is what God called him to do, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Praise the Lord. So the remission of sins and inheritance among all the sanctified by the faith that's in Jesus. Praise God. It took Jesus' faith to, to, to be that seed, amen, that fell to the ground, to go to the cross, to be crucified, amen. And when Adam was sinned, or when Adam sinned, he was then put out of the garden, right? Go, let's go back to Genesis for a moment. Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. So Adam said, unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of your wife, hast eaten of the tree, and of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou was taken, and for dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. Now, so man couldn't any longer eat and live from his inheritance, right? Mm -hmm. He couldn't, he didn't have access to the plants and the herb bearing seeds and so on and so forth. 
He didn't have access to the Word of God. He was separated now from God. So now he has to sustain his life by his own effort. Praise the Lord. And what does that bring? Our own words, our own ideas, our own effort, our own work. It brings thorns and it brings thistles. All right? Then the sacrifice of Jesus comes. He bore our cursed state. He became the curse, amen, so that we could escape the consequences. He lost his inheritance so that we could have an inheritance. Amen. And that's what's signified by the thorn, the crown of thorns on his head. He took those thorns and those thistles that was all we could produce outside of God, without the connection of God, without having the word of God. Amen. And so because of that, he takes, this, he takes the thorns and the thistles. We've been restored, and now we can live from our Father's inheritance again. Now we can go back to the Word of God and use the Word of God the way Adam used it. He was told to have dominion. He, he used his ability to speak, which is what separates us from all other forms of life. Amen. The thing that makes us like God is that we are speaking spirits once we're born again. And that he, he names all the animals. How does he name all the animals? Because he had revelation knowledge. When the animals came before him, he, he called them whatever their essence was. He, he, he didn't know. I mean, first time he saw a giraffe was the first time he ever saw a giraffe. Uh -huh. I mean, when he saw it, that was the first giraffe, right? But he knew to call it that because of the essence of that animal. He had insight. He had revelation. Amen. Because of his connection with God. So back to Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. He wants to open our eyes and turn us from darkness. Amen. From our own thinking from our own rationale and from the power of Satan and that's what Satan is he operates in the in the natural realm amen so that we may receive forgiveness of sins and our inheritance among them which are sanctified by the faith amen that is in me all right now let's go to first John chapter 5 and verse 4 and we're shifting a little bit here but we're on, it's the same theme I'm just trying to show you something a little bit more here so first John again first John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, amen, that's us, we've been born again, born from above, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the natural, overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. So here we are, we're here to fulfill the mandate that God gave to Adam. Amen. We were created speaking spirits. Praise the Lord. Again, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. So God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Amen. So Adam was supposed to have dominion. We've been redeemed. We've been restored to that condition, which means we're supposed to have we're supposed to have dominion. God was constantly giving Adam revelation knowledge, Amen. But because of the fall, that connection was been broken. Adam had to go from revelation to information, Amen. What he could receive through his five senses. Now, how many of you know? That I'm going to say 75%, but it's probably higher than that. And I'm just, I'll speak for myself. You all might be way more spiritual than me, but I'm just saying. At least 75% of everything I do is by the sense realm. My behavior, my reactions, my responses, my initiating uh, situations, and so on and so forth, is dominated by the five senses. That's not how we're supposed to be. Because we've been redeemed from this. Doesn't mean that, we, see, we're in the realm of the senses, but we're not of the realm of the senses. We're supposed to be living by our inheritance. And we're living a life that is far below that by living by our senses. Praise the Lord. And so, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. And this is where, this is where the discipline comes in. We've always thought, or been taught, religiously speaking, we've been taught that the discipline is about us being good. 
you know, not, not saying a cuss word, not, you know, not doing a bad thing, not thinking a bad thought, not, you know, responding to a situation. That's, I mean, we all want to be better people. We, we want to be moral and all these things, you know, that, but that's not the priority of God. Because as far as God's concerned, we've been redeemed. We are the righteousness of God in Christ, spiritually speaking. Amen. The problem is what he's wanting to disciple us in is our minds being renewed to the word of God. To where we function at the level that we were created to function at when we were born again. Instead of always dumbing everything down to the natural. How many of you know Satan is the God of this world? It's a little G, but he's the one that operates because he operates in the natural realm. Right. Every temptation you have, whether it's to fear, to doubt, to unbelief, to anger, to whatever it might be, it comes through your senses. It doesn't come to the spirit because he cannot touch you spiritually. Spiritually, you dominate him. The problem is we spend too much time in the flesh and that's where he can manipulate us. Right. Praise the Lord. So therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So Jesus came to restore us or to reconcile us, amen, that God, so that God connection for us could exist again. So that we could walk in revelation knowledge, amen. After we were born again, we became reconnected to God. We became reconciled to God, amen. That's Simple enough, we all have heard it and repeated it over and over and over most of our Christian lives. So what does being reconciled or reconnected to God really mean? We're back in the image and the likeness of God. The way man was created initially before he fell. Right? So we're back in this image and back in the likeness of God. And that means that we are made to act just like God. A speaking spirit. God is a spirit, but he's a speaking spirit. And that's what elevates him above everything else. He made us like him. Spirit beings that can speak. Praise God. Look at Isaiah 55, uh, verses 8 and 9. Instead of that, we've become like the parrot that learns to talk. He really doesn't know what he's saying, right? He just hears it enough that he repeats it. So he hasn't got any real power. He can't, he can't have a conversation. He can only say, child's a Democrat, or whatever it is that you taught him. You know, I, I said that because when I was a kid, one of my parents' friends had a, had a parrot, Efner's, child Efner, and they were Democrats, and that's all that bird would ever say. Well, he said a few other things that I can't repeat in church, but that was the main thing he'd say was, child's a Democrat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, when I lived in South Carolina, when I was in service, they had a, a minor bird in the shoe store. And every time you'd walk into the shoe store, as you'd come into the door, you'd open the door, there was a little bell on the door, and it would ring, and that bird would say, How you doing? That, the same thing every, to everybody. How you doing? Sounded just like that. And you'd look around, and you're looking for this little old man or somebody. And, you know, How you doing? The next one would come in, and then finally you'd see the bird over there. But the bird doesn't know what he's saying. He's just saying because, you know, and that's what happens to us. We are speaking spirits and we're saying stuff that has no value. We're just repeating things, amen, that we hear in the world. Instead of saying, instead of being original, instead of being creative and saying what God says to change situations, we just keep repeating. We keep parroting, amen, the same old stuff and getting the same old results and wondering why, amen. But here he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now remember, this is Old Covenant. We have been brought back to the image and the likeness of God. So he wants us to rise up, amen. Once we're born again, he wants us to come up, back up, and think like he thinks, and speak like he speaks. We use that as an excuse you know, for we don't know what God's doing. Yeah, we know exactly what God's doing. It's all written out right here. It's all, it's all in the book. Amen? So he's, he's wanting us to come back up. You know, rise up. Get your mind renewed to the Word of God and start acting and speaking like God. Acting like God doesn't mean 
perfection in the sense that you never do a wrong thing or a sinful thing. He's talking about you get results because you act like God. You speak to things that are not as though they are. Amen. You, you look at the things that, uh, that the world sees and says that it can never happen. You go, I declare it in Jesus' name according to the word of God. That's mine. It belongs to me. Amen. That's how God. It's dark. So what does God do? He doesn't say, oh my God, how dark. Look how dark it is. He said, let there be light. Amen. Where there's not, he speaks something to that. Praise the Lord. And that's what we have been re reconciled to, back to that condition where we are like God again in his likeness and operate the way God does. We're supposed to be speaking what we want, not what we have. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. And it takes discipline because we have been dumbed down by the world and by religion itself to just you know, try to pray over some negative situation when we ought to be speaking to it. We have authority over it. You know, we get into fear and then it's panic. And we just start freaking out without doing what the one thing is that we can do to change the situation. We just, we, we become, you know, agitated and all freaked out. And by the time we realize, how many of y'all been ever been in a situation that was very carnal? I mean, you get in an argument with your spouse. This only happened to me once. <laughs> today. Only once today. But I'm saying, you don't, you know what I mean? You, you know, in the heat of the moment, and I'm not talking about a knockdown drag out, but you know, words are said, and you know, you, you, you say things, and you, you respond. But here's what I'm saying. Then all of a sudden, you realize this is spiritual warfare. But you, for, for a little bit, long enough to get into the mess, you don't realize that. Why? Because you're totally thinking in the natural realm. Even though you're a spirit being, even though you're in the image and the likeness of God, unless you discipline yourself to think that way, you get sucked right into the natural. If it's not your spouse, it's some jerk that pulls out in front of you, you know, on the street. It's somebody that flips the bird at you, you know, in traffic or runs it past you in the parking lot or runs into you with the cart, you know, or, or crowds in front of you in the line, you know, or just, just, just rude and, and, you know, all the kind of stuff that happens to all of us every day. And our initial thought is to be just like them, right? But being like them gets us nothing but more of the same. Like we're supposed to be above this. We're supposed to be able to, in fact, I, 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 I'm trying to think what it was. Uh, you know, if uh, oh, it'll come back to me later, I'll let's leave it alone for now. Uh, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Now that's a positive statement, but not necessarily a true statement, right? <laughs> yeah. Because we know that that's what we're supposed to do, but more often than not, we're walking by sight. We are functioning based on the sense realm instead of by faith. So even though we are in the likeness and in the image of God, we're still operating in the likeness and the image of our fallen father, Adam, who we have been separated totally from and reconnected to God. All right? Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. So this is the discipline. This is the this is the effort that we have to put into this is to renew our minds to the Word of God and, and make that dominate our thoughts because whatever we're thinking is what we're going to end up saying and doing. We all know that. I mean, you can't do anything without thinking about it first, even though some of the things we do are so repetitious and, and we do it so often that we don't really think we think about it. We think we're just reacting, but the truth is you have to have had a thought in order to, to do it, whatever it is. Our natural instinct ought to be to do what the word says and say what the word says but your mind has to be so renewed to that that it becomes the natural fail safe the natural thing that you fall to whenever a situation arises anyway so as it is written i made thee a father of many nations speaking of abraham before whom he believed even god who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were all right, so we are born of God, created in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, for good works that He ordained before the foundation of the world. God works, works that we can only do 
with God's ability, which is to speak to things that are not as though they are. And I don't want to be sound offensive or, you know, anti-Pentecost because I'm not. I've said before, I believe in it and I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but I do believe that God's trying to move us beyond that just as he wanted to move a Baptist from, from the Baptist not to give up what they believed as a Baptist, but to bring in more by coming into Pentecost, by believing in the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and all those kinds of things. It, it isn't that we deny the other, it's just that there is more. Well, if there was more, how can we be so arrogant or presumptuous to think that now we have it all? No, we just have more, but there is so much more of God that we have an experience, and that's what he's trying to get us to do. He's trying to bring us into something greater. This is all about revelation. It's all about more and more and more of what God does. Now, how many of you know, and I don't know how you, what your all's background is, but I came out of a Disciples of Christ as a kid, which didn't even believe really in a, in a you know, a... Uh, Salvation in the sense of confessing Christ. You just got baptized in the church when you were 12 years old, and that's it. We never had a, you know, we never had a, uh, you know, an altar call. You never got up, and or at least in the church I was in, you never had a, uh, you know, come to Jesus moment in the sense that I'm confessing Jesus as my Lord and Savior. It's just like everybody just believes this, right? Our our pastor was a theology professor at Drake. I don't even know if he was saved. I mean, he knew a lot of the Bible, but he taught out of the newspaper more than he taught out of the Bible. Really nice guy. In fact, he was my parole officer. <laughs> we were just kids. We got in a bunch of trouble. I grew up in a little town. And so rather than have us all go to jail, it would have been the entire town would have gone to jail. I mean, all the kids in the town. <laughs> this town was about 300 people. They just made him our, we had to go and report to him every Saturday and, you know, so that we wouldn't have a record, you know, if we did that for however long it was, six months or whatever it was, and then we all got good. So, so I don't have a record, but <laughs> only because of the grace of God and praise the Lord. Anyway, I, that's what happens when you get old. You just start thinking things and you actually say it. You just don't think them anymore. You actually say it. Anyway, as that is written, I made thee a father of many nations before him who believed even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which are not as though they are. Praise the Lord. So I said at the very beginning, Satan has to operate in the natural. Now, I know we think that he is this spiritual giant. No. He, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall. I'll, I'll read you the scripture in a minute. He fell. That's why he's the God of this world, because he doesn't have access to the heavenlies. Not, not, I mean, into the atmosphere, but not into the place of God. Yes. We call it the heavenlies, but it's another dimension is all it is. It's another realm. And he doesn't have access to that. He has to operate here. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he has to operate in the natural in such as is common to man. Amen. Information. He does not have revelation. If he had revelation, he would not have crucified or been involved or initiated or instigated crucifying the Lord. Because he would have known this is not a good thing for me. This isn't going to work out well. Right? right? He doesn't know. He doesn't know what you're thinking. You've got to say something for him to know. So he plants thoughts. He'll try to put you in situations and circumstances that will cause you to respond somehow, then he knows, okay, that's, that's a button I can push. And how many of you know he usually does the same stuff over and over and over because it's worked? Yeah. Yeah. And it's always a natural thing yeah. because that's where he has to operate. And if we operate in the spirit, he cannot touch us. He's scared to death of you speaking the word of God. He's a fallen spirit. He doesn't operate in the spirit realm. He's the God of this world. He can't go into the upper level where we can live. We are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we have authority over him and all of his hosts. Look at Luke chapter 10, verses 16 through 19. He that heareth you, heareth me. This is Jesus talking. Think, think about that. 
When you speak the Word of God, when the Satan hears you, he's hearing God. That's what freaks him out. He doesn't know the difference between you and God when you're speaking the Word. Right? He that heareth you, hears me. And he that despiseth you, despises me. Satan hates your guts. He hates everything about you. Because he wants to be not only the God of this world, he wants to be God. And you are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You have the position he wanted, but will never have access to. Praise the Lord. And the 70 returned again and, and with joy and said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. Now he's telling, he's showing them something. He's showing them, this guy that you think is all this powerful and everything, I saw him. I saw him drop like bird crap out of the sky. That's what he's saying. I saw him fall. He just plot, you know. Behold, I give you power. Now he's talking to us that are born again. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yes. Look at this. Now this is our God speaking. Yes. I give you power to tread on serpents. First he tells us he's dropped like a rock. He's, he's just an, another creature on this earth that I give you dominion over every creeping thing, over everything that is on this earth, every animal, everything, right? Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Lord. Imagine if we embrace that, that right there alone. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's hard to get your head around. Why? Because we have this natural way of thinking of everything instead of seeing ourselves as we really are. Lord. Imagine how bold you would be. Imagine how courageous we would be if we really believed that nothing by any means shall harm me. Come on. Come on. Amen. We, we could walk through a troop and leap over a wall. We'd kick the devil's butt. Amen. I think I said, we'd fight him till hell freezes over, and then we'd fight him on the ice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the authority that we have. That's the power that we've got. If thou canst believe. Yes. And the only way we can believe is to get our mind renewed to who we are in Christ and stop believing these lies that we're just this human, amen, that's going to heaven. You're way more than that. You are this God-man, this speaking spirit that brings heaven to earth. Yes. That is a portal for God to enter this realm. Mm -hmm. You are a devil whipper. Praise the Lord. Yes. So our, and our first job is given to us by Jesus. Power to kick the devil rear end. Matthew 6.33. Remember, he told us the kingdom is like a man sowing seed. Right? This kingdom of God is as a man, as if a man going about sowing seed. What does he tell us to do? Seek first the kingdom of God. How do we do that? By sowing seed. Mm -hmm. By doing the original mandate that God gave us to speak to things that are not as though they are. Yes. To take dominion over everything on this planet. Amen. Right? Sow the word. Sow the seed. Hallelujah. And all these things shall be added to you. Yes, Lord. Praise God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And so are you. That's who we are. That's what we are. Amen. We have the same attributes as our Father. Jesus said, I'm not ashamed to call you my brother. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased, God said to Jesus. Amen. And He said, we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. God is saying the same thing to you. I mentioned this 
years ago, I was here at the church one day praying, and I was up here at the altar, and I heard not an audible voice, but I heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me, and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I thought, well, yeah, I mean, I've read that. And God said, no, I'm talking to you. Now, I knew I didn't deserve to be called that. But this isn't about what we deserve. This is about grace. This is about what God purchased yes. for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So you are his beloved son, male or female. There's, it's not gender specific here. You are his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. And the devil wants you to believe you haven't been good enough. You know, you had that argument. You had this thing. You had that thing. You had some other issue. You had some. That's all a lie of the devil. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. In spite of you. Praise God. We have the same attributes of God. We are supposed to talk like Him. We are supposed to act like Him. We are seated with Him in heavenly places. I know from a religious perspective that sounds almost like heresy. It sounds like blasphemy. But you know what? Jesus was a man. He operated as a man. And that's the stuff he was saying all the time, and it's why the religious people hated him with such a passion. I and my father are one. I only say what my father says. Right? Yep. Who does he think he is? Well, that's what most people would say to you if you were to say that. But that's who we are, and that's what we're supposed to be declaring. Mm -hmm. To act like our father, we're going to have to start speaking to some storms. Yes. We're going to have to start doing some things that are supernatural. Amen. And we do it, it starts right here. Yes, Isaiah 8 and verse 18. I'll hurry along here and finish up, praise the Lord. Isaiah 8 and verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. We are the New Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. I'm not going to teach that. I've already, we've talked about it. But we are the Jews by faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sons of Abraham. The seed of Abraham. Praise the Lord. So behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. We were created for signs and wonders. We were created for the miraculous. We were created to operate like God. Born again. Born again in the image and the likeness of our Father. When you believe and act on the Word, when you know who you really are in Christ and the power that's in you, nothing will be impossible to you. Now, we've heard that, and we've talked about it, and we've, we've received it in a, in a religious way, and that's why we don't do it. We're still waiting to get good enough. We're still struggling to be, you know, less human. Jesus was fully man and fully God. Amen? When we were born again, we became the very same thing. A human being, a man, filled with the Godhead. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Filled with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? It's God. God is a spirit. You become what you were before the foundation of the world in Adam. You become a speaking spirit. You just happen to have a body because with, without a body, you're illegal on this planet. That's why God had to have a body. He had to be born a human, amen, in order to do what he did to redeem us. He couldn't come as God. He couldn't just wave a, a hand over everything and say, okay, I'm blotting out all of that. No, he had set this thing in motion. It had to be a blood sacrifice. It, had, it was all part of the covenantal way of doing things, amen. Well, he fulfilled it. Yes. We have been redeemed. Yes. We are his children, his offspring. I mean, think about that. The offspring of God. That's who we are. That's what we are. The devil wants to keep you in this natural way of thinking about yourself, about your circumstance, about your life, about
about the world around you, when you are to dominate this thing. The problem is we haven't been following the plan that God laid out. If we come back to doing it God's way, I'm telling you, by the word of God, we'll get the God results. We have to. Otherwise, this is all just bogus. And we're all wasting our time. All right. A couple more scriptures here and we'll wrap up. First Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 3 and 4. First Peter 1, 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again, birthed us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that but doesn't fade away, Reserved in heaven for you. That word heaven doesn't mean it's when you die. It's talking about in the spirit realm. Which is what you are. So at the same time we're here on earth, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have access to both realms. All right. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Second Peter 1, 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these, by the Word, you might be partakers of the divine nature. In other words, that you might start functioning as you really are. As a God child. As a child of God. A speaking spirit. Amen. Partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Praise the Lord. So hold fast, the scripture says, to the profession of your faith. Yes. Stay in the spirit. Don't let the enemy pull you back into the natural. Mm -hmm. Exercise dominion. And if you'll exercise dominion, you'll dominate the world, the flesh, and the devil. Speak and act like you are in charge here. Because you are. Yes, Lord. You were made for the supernatural. You were made by the supernatural for the supernatural. You were born of the supernatural to dominate the natural. Everything in this natural world comes from the supernatural. Everything in the physical world comes from the spirit world. It was in the spirit world first, therefore the spirit dominates the natural. Because it wouldn't exist without it. We are spirits in a natural world, which gives us dominance if we will exercise our spiritual authority, if we will function as the spirit beings that we are, having our minds renewed to the word of God and saying what God says about the situations, we will dominate. Nothing will be withheld from us. Nothing shall be impossible for, for us. And nothing will harm you. Jesus never, did he ever act like he was frightened? He even told the, the centurions, he told the governor, the, 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 the pilot, he said, you know, I could call in, you know, thousands of legions of angels right now. You don't have any power over me except what I yield to you, what I give you. I could wipe this whole thing out in a heartbeat if I wanted to. But for this cause, I have come. This is my purpose. Amen. And we have a purpose that is just as important. And that's for God to be born over and over and over and over again in this earth. And for the devil, the defeat that Jesus placed on him to be enforced over and over and over again. Amen. We're going to get into the book of Revelation here before too much longer. Only because I'm hearing it all the time now on TV for some reason. I don't know if it's a cycle, but... You know, it, that stuff is all about trying to scare us. But that book is about Jesus. Yes. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not a revelation of freaky things that are going to happen to us in the future. We have nothing to fear. Right. Amen. We have authority over all of it. 
nothing shall by any means harm you. That's, it, that's true, all right? So then we have to make everything conform to that reality. Instead of taking something out of context and saying, oh my God, you know, what if, what if the Antichrist? I'm not worried about the Antichrist. I've got the Christ. <laughs> Amen? There were many Antichrists already in the days of, uh, of Paul. And a, the Antichrist is just somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus. It's Antichrist. Well, if, this, if Satan is under my feet, Amen. And all of his demons and his imps and his minions. What in the world or why in the world would I fear anybody who is being just simply influenced mm -hmm. by a demonic spirit? Mm -hmm. If I speak to it with the authority that I have as a child of God, they shudder and shake. Because when they hear me, they hear him. And he's already put a weapon on them that they'll never forget. Amen? So exercise your true identity. Use the gifts that God has given you as a speaking spirit. Amen? And speak to the mountain. Hallelujah. Show this world that we are somebody. That God is alive and well Amen. in each and every one of us. Hallelujah. And no weapon formed against us can prosper. Lord. And every tongue that rises in judgment against us, we condemn. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Go in the power of His might. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.